What's going on folks? It's Dr. Remy LeBeau and I'm coming at you once again from the x to provide you my thoughts on this crazy crossover that I just uh, started watching of the CW Flareoverse, um, Crisis on Earth X. Um, I never thought I would say this, but like a show produced on the CW was better than a movie produced by Warner Brothers of some of the most important characters that have ever been created in comic dumb. Um, the entire DC universe is legendary and to finally get them on the big screen was such an incredibly important step towards a lot more awesome. Uh, and even though I, I did think it was fine, like it was nowhere near as good as what I just saw. <laughs> like, um, I, so I've been watching these shows since the beginning. I've watched Arrow since episode one. I watched all of Arrow. Flash, they introduced him in, I believe, season two of Arrow in like kind of a backdoor pilot thing. They gave Flash his own series. I've been watching Flash ever since. Um, I watched Legends of Tomorrow. I don't love it, but I watch it. And I watch Supergirl as well. Um, this season is actually a lot better than the last two seasons so far, so I'm really excited about it. Uh, it's just it's one of those shows that's kind of finding its footing, and and I think uh, finally it has found its footing, and it's doing exactly what it needs to do. So I'm really happy about that. Um, so yeah, I'm a fan of these shows, um, and 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 there was up there was a point there was up. It, okay, so over the course of the run, the CGI has actually been pretty good on the shows, which is surprising. Um, on the Flash. That's a very CGI heavy show and they put a lot of resources into it. They made it look really good at first. Um, but I think as soon as Legends of Tomorrow hit, like that's when the CGI started to get shitty. Before that, it was always really good. Like they they had some like they had Killer Shark, um, this like human shark hybrid creature. Um, and he looked fantastic. Like he looked flawless. Uh, and that was like I don't know, maybe season three of The Flash, maybe season two, um, and now they had him in this in this show, in this episode, this first episode of the crossover, Crisis on Earth X, and it didn't look that great, you know, like it looked very animated, um, and so yeah, the quality of the CGI has dropped, and I and I think it's due to Legends of Tomorrow. I think Legends of Tomorrow was too ambitious, and they're just trying to do too much on a small budget, and it's just not coming out that great. Uh, it's coming off really cheap, and you know that that's only enjoyable for so long. I really love the characters, but like a lot of the show, what's going on in the show is just not of interest to me. But it sucks because I really like the characters, and of course, I I still watch it because it's part of this whole thing. And like, when you're gonna have a crossover like this, and there's gonna be like some you know um, some important storyline uh, that that storylines that 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 branch out from the Legends of Tomorrow show, I don't want to not know what that is about. You know, I want to, I want to know because I've been in this from the beginning. So I want to know what's going on. Um, I'm not, but again, I'm not loving the Legends of Tomorrow thing. The, um, the use of some of the prior villains of both Arrow and, and Flash in a weird, in a weird way is just, if you, I feel like it's like devaluing like the intensity of like the cool experiences that, that um that one can have by like revisiting these older seasons of Arrow and Flash um because now like the characters the villains have been have been overused to a large extent and and ultimately have become not that interesting unfortunately as a result of it to me I don't know if that's the case to other people but I, I feel like the show itself is is a bit of a mess and I, I I'm not I, I don't love it but I love Flash love Flash I, people have problems with the last. I don't have. I don't have problems. I don't have any problems. I fucking love Flash. It's fucking awesome. Um, uh, Arrow, I've liked since season one. You know, whatever. Some stuff is like whatever, as, as opposed to other stuff. It's like it's not that exciting. But but um, some of the stuff is really good, and so I think that's the saving grace for that show. And it's enough. You know, it's sufficient. It does. I it does it for me. So I'm I'm cool with it. Um, so yeah, I'm down with all of Arrow. I love Arrow. Really enjoy Arrow. And again, Supergirl, I'm 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 iffy on, but I am familiar with what's happening. I have watched the episodes. I know the storylines, the characters, etc. So it's all of relevance to me.
All right. So then I hear that there's going to be another crossover. There was a crossover last season. Uh, it was basically uh, Invasion, uh, which is this cool story that Tom McFarlane did a lot of the art on. Um, I think it was back in the late 80s. And it involved, again, aliens coming down and blah, blah, blah. Anyway, um, the, fuck, the, the fucked up thing about that crossover last year was that the first episode, Supergirl, the crossover element of it was just at the tail end of the episode. Like, the last, like, five minutes, Barry shows up, you know, and it's like, he brings her in, you know, and it's like, all right, well, that's not, um, that's not really a crossover then. <laughs> like, it's more of a, of a, um, I don't know. Uh, it, it's just, it was just, it was like a pocket pocket crossover where it was like oh we're well, having a crossover in this pocket of the show as you tell this other boring story sorry folks it wasn't that great of a story it was kind of flat but but yeah I, I, we felt a bit bamboozled i feel uh, as a fan base um and and but the rest of it was really great in fact the first one was really great and i hope that doesn't happen here i hope they continue the fucking action because the sequence they had in the, the church was in fucking incredible it rivaled civil war yes the the effects the the quality of the effects was not at the caliber of civil war of course but the action the gravitas you know like the engagement in the action the the um involvement with all the characters and like being excited about each different character and there being so many of them that was so intensely awesome that I just couldn't, it, it was just like an o, like an overload of fucking joy. I was like overloaded by joy by just watching that entire sequence. It was so fucking good. And the only way you can really appreciate that sequence, I think the right way, is by being a fan of the Flareoverse. Like you have to be involved in all of the storylines. You have to understand what's happening with the characters, who's who, you know, like... You, you want to have also that feeling of like history with the character. Like you knew, you knew where they started from. A lot of these characters have had really big arcs. It's taken a while for a lot of them to get to the level that they're at. Killer Frost, that was the whole thing. Um, Vibe, that was the whole thing. Um, Wally West, that was the whole thing. You know, it's like every character has had like a really big, long episode arc to build up who they are. Uh, Firestorm, right? Like that's... That took a while to kind of build up and explain and then finally kind of solidify as something awesome, which it is. And they, even though the effects are not perfect, they're pretty damn good when it comes to Firestorm. I, I really like it when they show us Firestorm. It just looks so authentic. It's awesome. Um, the, uh, all right. So yeah, uh, so, so the first crossover was cool. Like it was. It was it was all right, you know, like the um there were the, like I, like I said like the second episode of it, which was actually the beginning of the crossover, had some really great fucking sequences with all of the characters in it. I think those are obviously the best ones, the ones that have like all the characters in interacting, using their powers or whatever their skills, abilities. It's really fucking great, uh, and they again did a really great job. Uh, um, on a couple of sequences in that show, but there were other parts that were kind of lullish, and that's fine. I hope it doesn't happen too much here. I hope they really go in for the kill in terms of like all out fucking action in every episode, because if they do that, then that then they will be hashtag legendary at that point. Like they will um, become it will become something special. I think that will transcend just like the moment, and it will become sort of timeless. Because this first episode was that, <laughs> like, and that's what compelled me to do this video. I was not going to do a video. I was not going to. I never talk about this stuff. I never talk about the Flaro Super Legends verse or whatever it's called. I never talk about it because, like, it's just not quite of that caliber of quality that that I feel like would allow me to like just kind of gush over it. It would be a lot of criticism, and I don't like. I don't like to feel like. If like, you know, my mother didn't always say this, but somebody's mother always said that if you don't have something nice to say about somebody, don't say anything at all. Like, uh, you know, it's like if, I, if I'm just going to sit and like nitpick and criticize something, I may as well not talk about it at all. Uh, and so, yeah, so that's therefore I avoided talking about these things. But but this this episode I just saw, it was, I was like cheering the entire time. I was cheering. Everything was fucking awesome. I love, first of all, the, a lot of important character moments were 
were so wonderful. And even if you had no action in the show and none of this really cool, like, alternate Earth thing where, like, the Nazis have taken over, um, if you didn't have any of that, a lot of the character interactions were just so captivating. Like, if this was just a, um, a, an Iris and, uh, and Barry Whiting episode... And it was just about all these characters coming together and just like kind of quipping and interacting in interesting ways like like Sarah and Alex did. Hashtag yes. Fucking uh, some lesbian love. I am uh, like, you know, ideally um, I am a gay man myself. And so it's great to see like gay characters depicted in like really positive ways. They're both depicted as like three dimensional and strong and you understand their motivations and like. And they're, they're just awesome. Like, they're both fucking awesome. And in this episode, like, just them two together, Sarah and Alex, was fucking awesome, man. I was so happy for that. Like, because I hadn't even conceived of it as, like, something of interest, you know? But then as it started to kind of play out, I was like, there is another lesbian. Oh, Sarah. Sarah's a bisexual. And so I was like, well, Alex can get with Sarah. Alex is getting with Sarah. Alex and Sarah are a thing. Sarah, Salix. <laughs> hashtag Salix or hashtag Sarix, whatever you want to call it. Fucking dope. Um, just shit like that. Like all this stuff with Barry and, uh, and, and, uh, and fucking Oliver when they were trying out the tuxes and then Barry sees Oliver in the tux and he's like, damn, like he's taken aback by how good looking Oliver looks. It was so subtle, but it was just so authentic. And it's it just, you know these characters so well, and you know that they know each other, but we rarely get to see them together. And so get, getting to see them together and interacting so organically friendly, is it just you just buy it. Like, there's no doubt. It's like, yes, this is real. Like, these characters are friends, and they coexist in the world, and this is happening, and it's awesome. Um, so you had, like, this great fucking buildup of all these, like, tight interconnections of the characters. Um for like the majority of the show and then the wedding starts and it's beautiful and it's awesome and you feel it and, and Barry's teary eyed and I'm getting a little teary eyed because I'm like shit this is fucking this is Barry and Iris getting married you know like it's just it was so wonderful and uh and then the fucking Nazis come the Nazi doppelgangers come and then it's all out fucking war and it is so good I think my favorite part was when uh Caitlin became killer killer frost uh, because we hadn't really seen that before. We haven't really seen her just, like, turn the power on in order to be heroic. Like, we haven't seen that. And it was always more of, like, shit, like, it's it's emerging. Like, she's got to try to suppress it. It's always a problem. When it happens, it's, like, you know, the end of the world. But, like, here it was more like, we need the power. G fucking use the power. And she used the power, and it was awesome. <laughs> just like everyone else. Fucking Cisco vibe. Vibing. Fucking... Everybody, everybody was involved. It was, uh, but Sarah and Alex kicking the ass of that, of that one dude. Who was that one dude? Because if it wasn't Barry and it wasn't, they haven't revealed who he is. Uh, by the way, I think that the little girl in the wedding, the little girl in the wedding, like went up to Barry and was like, "Oh, I'm so happy to be here, especially for your wedding." I think that's him and Iris's fucking daughter from the fucking future. I think she's a speedster, and I think she ran back in time because she wanted to be there for her parents' wedding. I that's my theory. It just it felt like that because she was there was like love in her, and you saw both Barry and Iris in her. She like looked like them. Anyway, there was it's everything was so good. Everything was so good. There's only one bad thing. There's only one bad thing. I'm going to point it out. I'm going to point it out, okay? Melissa Benoist, who plays Supergirl, and I don't know if I said her name right, but I hope I did. Um, she's great. She's wonderful. She's She plays wholesome so well. But at the very end, when we saw her doppelganger take off the mask, and it was her, I didn't 100% buy it. And also, when Oliver took off his mask, evil e evil Oliver took off, took, took off his mask, and spoke, I didn't quite buy it either. But besides that, I bought everything else. All the action was fucking awesome. That sequence in the church was fucking, I'm gonna watch it right now again, because I, I, I it was fucking great. It was fucking great. Um, and, uh, and it just, where it's gonna go from here is so exciting to think about, because we have three more episodes. 
I hope they don't do what they did last season. It's like, let's figure out a way to keep them in a one place for a while. Like, no, no. <laughs> let's go places. You're chasing each other. Go to the Earth X. Come back. Fucking groups of superheroes fighting each other. I want Superman to pop out. You got to bring in Superman. You introduced fucking Superman. You have Superman in your pocket. Use him. I heard they're not using Martian Manhunter. Why not? You have him. Use him. I know you're probably saving it for like an even bigger fucking crossover in the future. You're just kind of, again, giving us uh, little nuggets of, of things that you can do and giving us more. I'm, I understand that. But I want it all now, God damn it! I fucking want it now. I want all the characters in one place right now fighting. Themyscira. Themyscira was introduced in, um, I think, the last episode or the second to last episode. Um, where I guess, uh, what's her name? Something of Troy... Uh, like that historical figure, something of Troy, um, she was taken to Themyscira to live. Helen of Troy. Helen of Troy was taken to Themyscira to live. And so the Themyscira exists in this universe, and that means there are Amazons, and that means there is a fucking Wonder Woman. Bring her in. Bring her in. Bring her in. If you're going to have Superman, why not have Wonder Woman? There was mention of Bruce Wayne. Bring him in. Why not? Fucking have Batman on the show. Just one time. One fucking time have Batman on the show. Have the entire fucking just... The... It, it, I, 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 <laughs> the possibilities are endless. And like... The thing is like CW... Like it's doing it better than the film universe without a doubt. It's doing the DC verse better than the film universe. Um, and if they only had some more money... It would be incredible. If they had a little... If the budgets were bigger... It would be incredible, but it's fine. It's it's really good. This episode was a excellent, excellent. As a fan of all these shows, from the beginning, watching all of it, this this culmination of everything, in such a spectacular way, with such an awesome villain. I love the idea of like a Nazi villain from another dimension. Love it. Nazi do doppelgangers from another dimension. Fucking love it. With these awesome villains, you have these awesome fucking characters that we love interacting, powers just fucking being exhibited all over the goddamn place. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, all every fucking power you can think of in the alphabet and beyond is being represented. And it's just awesome. And I love it. And I had to talk about it. And I did. Gushed a bit. <sighs> Looking forward to episode two through, two through four. Anyway, that's my little video. If you haven't already subscribed, folks, if you don't know who I am, my name is Dr. Remy LeBeau. This is my channel, The X Slayer. I'm a geek. I've been, I'm a lifelong geek. I've been a fucking geek since I was 14 years old when I started reading comics. I think it was 13. 13 or 14. The first comic I ever bought was this Uncanny X-Men. It's not this exact issue because this is a... a what is it? It's a, this, this one's signed by Chris Claremont and Jim Lee. It's the first issue that I picked up off of the newsstand, essentially. And that's what got me uh, into the X-Men. And uh, Anyway, I haven't, I haven't stopped since. I mean, I've taken breaks in terms of collecting comics and reading comics and shit like that. But I've always been a fucking geek. And, um, and therefore, I wasn't going to not watch these shows when they first started airing. And therefore, I wasn't going to fucking gush over... Uh, I wasn't not going to gush over this fucking show that we just saw because it was fucking great and it needed to be gushed over because it's fucking great. Good job, fucking Greg Berlanti and everyone else that's involved. Andrew Kreisberg, I hope you're not the one that, that's fucked up and was harassing women, you asshole. Wh whichever one you are, fuck you and go to fucking hell, you ass. Fucking motherfucker. Uh, but, um, but yeah, everybody responsible for this shit, like, great fucking job. Goddamn, Mark Guggenheim. I think he's writing X-Men right now. Uh, what is he writing? He's writing X-Men Gold. One of the flagship X-Men titles. Um, he's also one of the writers or producers in this, on, this, on this series. Fucking great. Anyway, I uh, hope everybody's doing well. If you haven't already subscribed, like I said, there's a little button down there. Just press it. Subscribe. You're in. You're, you're, you're with me. We're together. We'll continue. Um, and as always, I want to remind you, if you haven't already put an X in that box, you should because ain't nobody checking me. Take care, folks. Bye-bye.